Returning now to our top story, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken has postponed a planned visit to China this weekend after the intrusion of a Chinese balloon into US airspace. The Pentagon suspects it is a high-altitude surveillance device. It also says it has detected a second spy balloon transiting across Latin America but does not appear to be moving towards the US. China has apologised for the incident, claiming it was a weather balloon blown off course. Joining me now live is Professor Joe Siracusa, a political analyst at Curtin University. Professor, thank you for joining us. Uh, what would this sophisticated surveillance uh, balloon be looking for exactly? Uh, good afternoon, Danica. Look, uh, let's, uh, let's not mince words here. This is a spy balloon. We all, and we've all been invested in these kinds of things the last 10 years. This balloon has reached the same height as the U-2 uh, reconnaissance plane, which was shot down by the Russians on May 1st, 1960, just before a major meeting between the Americans and Russians to settle things down in Europe. It's got all the same hallmark, uh, hallmarks of this. Now, the, uh, the Chinese didn't really apologize. What they said is they regretted they had no control over the headwinds. Not much of an apology. And, and President um, uh, Biden uh, got in touch with his Secretary of State and called off a very carefully planned uh, meeting with the Chinese, which was uh, organized on the, the sidelines of the Bali uh, summit uh, last year, I believe. And so uh, it, it, it's it's a big deal. And keep in mind that, uh, you know, t tension right now between the uh, uh, the United States and China is very high. Anything can set it off. Now, there is a concern here. Uh, it would be very easy for the American Air Force to shoot the damn thing down. That's what some people want. But if they do, then they will have set a jurisdictional pretext for the uh, Chinese to shoot down everything over the South China Sea because they claim not only the, the waters of the South China Sea, they claim the air above it. So all these disputes America has over freedom of navigation and freedom of, uh, of the air has got to do with this. So this balloon could have uh, repercussions. And, you know, uh, we're, we're at uh, tinder, tinder hooks right now with the Chinese. I mean, almost anything can happen. And look, for all I know is that this was uh, the balloon was launched uh, and sent in the direction of the United States States by people who are opposed to President Xi's uh, rapprochement with the United States. It could be that these are people who want to uh, make sure that Blinken doesn't come. And we haven't had a Secretary of State visit Beijing now in six years. So look, this is a big deal. It's not a weather balloon. It's a spy balloon because it has dual purpose. It's got panels on it and keep it up there. It's taken wonderful pictures and uh, we know what it is. And the thing is, it's a, it's a gray area. We've got our own spying equipment in, in space. Uh, every nation does, as a matter of fact. So, you know, it's, it's something that people tolerate. But I think it's unusual that uh, an incident like this could actually uh, force the Secretary of State to plan to, to postpone the most carefully planned meeting with the Chinese in three or four years. So it's a big deal. Yeah, it certainly is, and uh, we'll be keeping our eye on that one throughout the day. Let's move on now because former South Carolina governor and U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, will uh, reportedly announce her run for the Republican presidential nomination. Does she stand a chance, particularly against Trump? Well, yeah, you know, we could have said the same thing about Bill Clinton or Jimmy Carter. I mean, they, they came out of nowhere to, to win the presidency. Uh, look, Danica, in America, everybody wants to be president. Um, they, they get that Potomac fever and they, they get a little close to the White House and they see they have a chance. And, you know, what? what Donald Trump was very uh, new and novel in 2016. Um, uh, and he may not be able to even beat someone like her. Now, the thing is, and your viewers may not know this, but that when they have the Republican primaries, President uh, Trump uh, controls about 25 or 30 percent. But the Republican primaries uh, are winner take all. So if you uh, you get 28 percent of the primary, you're going to get all the votes because it's winner take all. It's not proportional. So uh, and of course, uh, there are a lot of people who want to run against uh, uh, former President Trump and 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 uh, Nikki Haley, who's a very attractive candidate because she's got some great ideas, has a good track record and all the rest of it, she, um, she's sort of, uh, well, we call her the canary in the coal mine. If she gets any traction uh, or any, any advantage over Trump, the others will see the same thing and they'll jump into the race too. But, um, you know, she's a member of the, the Trump cabinet. I think two or three others uh, in his cabinet, including Mike Pompeo, want to run for president. So uh, President Trump's going to have a rough time getting there. And if you noticed... 
you know, it was a, he was a little slow after he announced he was running. Then his mojo seems to be on hold the last couple of months. He hasn't been too excited, except for those digital trading cards. But And he's got a lot of other problems. Uh, could be that he just gets worn down at the end of the day. But uh, Healy is a, a wonderful prospect, and uh, she wants a shot at the brass ring, and she's got a good chance, good as chance as anyone else. Well, a fascinating uh, 12 to 18 months ahead. Joe Siracusa, thank you very much for joining us. Okay, thank you.